Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's build, we're going to build the challenge knife for the Wolf Tooth Damascus Challenge with A. Lee Knives. Uh, really excited. I had such a great time on this build. Um, here's the knife that I built. It's a kind of a recurve bowie, swoopy handle, double guard. Um, you'll see a little more in the build. Um, really nice two-tone color sheath. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'd love for you to um, keep watching, check it out, uh, see all the trials and tribulations I had doing this knife. Um, I know Aaron's going to bring his A game and he's going to bring something spectacular. So um, take a look, leave your comments um, down below. Uh, if you like this knife, put the comments down there. If you like Aaron's, go put comments in his as well. So uh, we just love having you guys along on this build. Um, I had a super fun time building this. So uh, thanks to Aaron for joining me at this build off. Let's take a look guys. So here's my design that I'm gonna do for this blade. Um, it's kind of a Bowie um, recurve. Um, love this style. This one's a little stronger curve on the handle. Um, obviously hidden tang. Uh, I think I'm gonna do either brass or bronze fittings, uh, or sorry, brass or copper fittings. Uh, I haven't quite decided yet. I have both, so um, we'll see. But right now, I'm thinking about how I'm going to get this onto this. I, I think I'm definitely gonna have to do some, some forging. Plus, we've got the wolf's tooth pattern coming across this edge, so I don't wanna just cut this. So I think I'm gonna forge this, curve it, stretch out the, uh, the tip a little bit. I've got enough length but um, I'm going to stretch it out so I get the pattern coming across the blade. Uh, and then I think I'm just going to widen a little bit just to get the width that I want. So not a whole lot to do, but let's get it in the forge and um, do some work on it. You'll notice there's some notches right where the tang starts. I put these in so that when you forge the tang down, you don't drag down the heel of the knife um, at the same time. At some point, I got to make one of those guillotine tools. Uh, I could really use it right now. Well, folks, I finally got tired of my anvil moving around. I think I have this problem licked. You'll see it in the next video. Now I've got the tang roughed out, so I'm going to start to put in the tip of the knife. So this is our cutting edge, the top. So now we're going to hammer in the bevels and that's going to curve this blade the other way. Here I'm banging it on the horn of the anvil to put the recurve in it. I cheated a little bit here and wanted to use the press to get it nice and flat. So I'm done the rough forging on this, um, brought the tang down and the curve I needed. There's lots of tang still to get removed, but um, I wanted to make sure I brought this down to get the curve here. 
because I wanted the wolf's teeth to follow the, the pattern here. I don't care if I cut a bit of the top off, which is what I'm going to end up doing, but uh, I want to make sure I had that, had this part here. So it looks pretty good. Um, I'll let it cool down, go to the grinder and put some profile on it. The white you see on the blade is just a wax marker I use to tell me what to take off. So I got tired of walking back to my drawing, so I decided to cut it out, lay it on top of my billet, and use marking fluid so I could get a better profile. In order to make this perfectly flat, I put it on the surface grinder and ground it down. Uh, turned out really well. There's a small choil area between the ricasso and the heel, uh, and I put this in with the small wheel attachment. Let's talk about the features of this knife. So, I'm thinking of adding a fuller from here to here on both sides. So I'm going to do that in the mill. So I'm going to do that first while it's still thick. You can see we've surface ground it. It's nice and level. Perfectly level. So a fuller. We'll add some jimping on the top. And then I'm going to put a distal taper in it with the surface grinder. So first is going to be the fuller because I want the full thickness for that. Then what I'm going to do is, I, when I made this, um, you can see how this one has got a channel. So I can take the center bolt out, loosen this one, and actually raise this. So we've got a 3 16 end mill uh, chucked up. Um, I've decided I'm going to square off the shoulders first. So let's do that operation. Now we have the shoulders nice and square. Now we gotta figure out how to lock this in the vise and measure the fell fuller so it's exactly the same on both sides. I was able to lock this in the mill on top of some parallels and put a parallel along the top spine so uh, that locked it in. I'm using a quarter inch ball end mill here to make the fuller. I've raised the uh, platent um, on here up about 45 thousandths uh, at the front here. So this should be a difference of 45 thousandths between this pivot point and the front. And then I'll flip it over and I'll raise this up again so we should have a nice taper. So I just painted this with layout fluid and I'm just debating <clears throat> on the, uh, the plunge. And uh, I want the plunge it's going to be the tricky part. This is going to be basically a full flat grind. There might be a tiny area at the top here, but I want the grind to just come up over the fuller and probably curve like this and go straight down the blade from there. 
that's why I didn't put the, uh, the fuller about quarter inch higher because I wanted it in here. So I started with a pretty aggressive angle here just to kind of set the bevel. Um, and then I'm just going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, making that a little wider until the point where it kind of will lay flat. And as soon as it lays flat, then you can just adjust pressure with your finger, either a little up or a little down, and that will move your bevel where you need it. Okay, folks, uh, so I'm ready to do the false edge on this thing, and this has always been something um, that's been a challenge for me, is doing a nice, even false edge. So I battled between um, doing them on the grinder with a jig. It's never really turned out perfectly. I've hand-done them, hand-filed them before. That works out well, but it's hard to get like file guides, like lines. Um, so what I decided to do this time is I took this angle, traced it on a piece of wood, uh, took it to the grinder. So now I'm going to put it up to the edge and I've got a mark here on the blade. So I have perfect scribe lines. To work from so I think that should work okay folks I think I got the solution so before I bought my uh, Wicked Edge Go for sharpening I use this janky sharpener that I made copied off a of Lansky which had just a piece of rod that moved in this this, this caster, this piece of wood is just, there's different holes here so you can move this up. So I put this all the way back, put the knife in it, and now put a file on it. So I think I should be able to get the exact bevel that I want. So here it is, the finished false edge. I think that jig worked out perfectly. So here it is after the heat treat. Um, my first time using the oven and uh, it's really, it, it's kind of like baked in the pattern here. Um, it almost looks like it's ceramic. Um, so pretty cool, super hard right now. Um, it's already been tempered, but it's, it's really hard and I'm looking forward to getting all the scale off. And uh, let's do the final grind. So here we are after the final grind. Um, looks pretty good. Um, obviously needs some sanding. I've only taken it to a 36. Uh, you saw on the video, 
I had a little oops on one of the sides, which I was man I managed to clean up, but still made me paranoid enough that um, I'm going to hand sand the rest. Um, so I've got some 100, 120 grit, so I'm going to start on that. And I don't mind hand sanding too much, so it'll give me some confidence that I'm not going to screw it up. Okay, let's go. So the first thing I'm going to start on is the flats. And uh, I've got a really hard piece of steel here just to keep my lines nice and crisp. Here it is after three hours <laughs> and all of that, um, 120 grit is done. Four more grits to go. Okay, folks, I'm ready to put a guard on this. So what I've decided to do is that uh, I'm going to make this a little more complicated. And not only am I going to put a guard, uh, I'm going to put a little finger guard, whatever this is called, um, which will also, and I've decided I'm going to use copper just because I think it'll look nice with this wood. You can see that. Um, I'm going to make the big guard out of copper and little guard out of um, copper. I might thin this out a little bit. I'm a little worried about it being heavy, but um, I want this just to curve in a bit so you have a nice spot for your finger. Um, and I want to see how it feels in the hand. I think it's going to be a little wide. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, time to slot these things uh, on the mill. Get the first one fitted up and uh, go from there. So I got the slot cut in the guard. Uh, I think I'm going to stipple uh, the top of the guard, which means take a punch and just put little stipples all over, little dots all over the front of the guard um, and see how that goes. So I've got the guard fitted, um, fits up nice. I'm going to take a little bit off here, make that a little closer to the blade, um, to the spine here, but um, fit up looks good. I haven't done this bevel that where the finger groove goes, but I've got the wood cut for the spacer, whatever this is called, the other finger guard. Um, so I'm going to drill through this so I can place that. Then I'll be able to place this one just like I did that one and then do the final one, um, which is nice because because this tang is curved, it's actually going to be easier to do it in pieces. Okay, let's go.
So rough fit up went nicely. Um, now it's just time to uh, level out the sides and then we'll start to profile our handle. It was a pretty tight space and I couldn't get into the finger well with my small wheel attachment. So I used this drum sander attachment on my drill press. Um, thanks to Dave Evader for uh, giving me that idea. Um, and I linked to his channel up here. Okay, folks. Here it is so far. I'm um, done the finger well, which turned out really well. Um, and for those who have never worked with copper, one of the tricky parts about working with copper is it heats up really, really fast. So um, you can't actually, I didn't want to epoxy, these are all still loose. Uh, if I were to epoxy these, when I grind it, these things heat up so much, the epoxy lets loose and you have gaps. So I'm going to have to do most of the grinding just with these kind of set a little bit. Um, and then I'll glue it up and then just do the final grinding and I might even do a lot of it with a file. Okay, most complicated thing on this knife is order of events. I keep having to rethink, what do I do next? Um, I think I've got the profile of the handle all done. Um, next is before I, I uh, change the, take this, the squareness off of the, off the handle, I need to drill the pinhole. I think I've taken the guard on and off of this thing a dozen times already and it freaks me out because you really have to hammer on it. You can see the hammer marks on the tang to get it off and you got to hammer it on so um, it freaks me out every time. So there's our mark. I've got it up on these one, two, three blocks just because I don't feel like taking the guard off. And I've actually put a 5 30 seconds um, bit here. Uh, and that's because sometimes I like the hole to be a little bit bigger just so that the pin goes in easy. Uh, the epoxy is going to fill that anyway. Um, and I'm going to keep the hole in the tang to be 8th inch. So that just gives me some, some play in case I need to sand the handle down a little bit or whatever else happens. Okay, ready to drill through the handle now. Um, always, always make sure you have another piece of wood underneath. I screwed that up last time. Um, you see I blew through a little bit of this. It doesn't matter here because uh, the handle's not, you know, that won't show and it'll get filled full of epoxy. But certainly I wouldn't want to do that here. Probably wouldn't matter because I'm going to shape this handle some more. But just in case, always put a piece of wood underneath. Perfect. I got my pin in there. Now I'm going to take down the sides to match the front guard. Here we go into the etch. Okay, I think we're ready for glue up. Um, got my epoxy ready. What I'm gonna use is this copper powder um, for the epoxy. So I'll actually have the epoxy kind of copper colored, um, just in case. 
and uh, in case it seeps out or there's if there is a gap it should get filled with copper um, okay let's go Thanks for joining me on this build, folks. I had a great time doing it. Um, spalted maple, um, burl handle, copper, um, guard and uh, finger guard, uh, wolf's tooth Damascus, false edge, fuller. Uh, I had a great time doing this build. I uh, can't wait to see what Aaron comes up with. Uh, leave your comments down below and uh, hope you guys like the build.